welcome back to the Thought Cloud podcast. The goal of this conversation is to tell the story of an inspiring student to inspire other students. Our guest today is Chris McGee. Chris is a sophomore at CU Boulder, where he is so active. I mean, he is doing so much just beyond his classes. Um, you know, he's involved in the real estate uh, organization over there for undergraduates. He started his own venture called Hug Your Friends. He's wearing the hat. Check it out. Maybe there's some for sale. Who knows? But we're going to hear about that. We're going to hear about his upcoming TEDx talk on March 2nd. So everyone can stay tuned for it and uh, be on the lookout for it. And uh, Chris is also writing a movie at the moment. He's doing so much. I mean, it's really awesome to see someone at the sophomore level, an undergraduate, just diving into so many aspects of life and seeing what it is that ultimately will be the thing that he focuses on most or maybe balances them all. So Chris, thanks for coming on, man. I'm super excited to chat with you. Yeah, of course. Thanks for uh, reaching out to me. It's an honor um, to be a part of something like this. Absolutely, my man. Well, hey, let's talk. Let's start from the top. Boulder. How did you decide Boulder was your school? What what kind of went into that in terms of those decision factors? Um, yeah, Boulder. I mean, it was kind of out of left field, to be honest. Um, I was fully enrolled um, at U of A. And then, um, you know, I was in the business program there and um, I was stoked to go uh, be a wildcat. And then um yeah i got the email um while i was in nicaragua actually it was pretty funny it was just like you know you got into cu boulder um and i'd always kind of said i'm not going to go to school in boulder i'm not going to go to school in colorado in general just because like you know growing up um i was a competitive snowboarder so i'd spend like four weeks at a time in colorado uh just to you know compete and train and whatnot and so i just kind of seen this place but i hadn't been elsewhere and then, you know, I came out and I visited and I was just like, wow, like this just like feels like home. Um, and so then, yeah, I mean, last minute I made the decision to unenroll and enroll here and uh, never looked back. I'm super thankful that I did. That's awesome. That's awesome. Where'd you grow up? So I grew up in uh, Park City, Utah. So definitely pretty yep. similar, but a lot different. Yeah, not too far away. Not too far away, but I mean, you got that mountain feel. You've got obviously, you know, skiing's accessible, big trees, etc. So awesome. So love that, you know, you chose Boulder. Obviously, you've been digging into it there. Um, you know, I really want to start with the meat of this. I think Hug Your Friends is kind of, you know, that's like, that's your brand, right? Like that is when I see Chris, I'm like, okay, Hug Your Friends. I want to know more about this immediately. Tell us about it. How'd you start it? What is it? And what do you hope to accomplish with it? Yeah, I mean, a lot to unpack here. A um, little backstory um, with Hug Your Friends is just kind of like, you know, when I was in eighth grade, um, our community lost two people in my grade um, to uh, suicide, um, you know, back to back days. Um, and without, you know, going into that too much, it just kind of had a huge impact on my life. And I've just kind of always... Um, you know, mental health has never been something taboo. It's always been something that was like free to talk about. And I feel like embracing, you know, your friendships is huge in that, you know, just to have that clarity and that sense of connection. Um, you know, you don't always feel comfortable talking to like your parents or whatnot, especially, you know, in these ages where you're developing into an adult. Um, and so basically my freshman year, um, I was just kind of sitting there and I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I, I wanted to put passion behind the hard work. So that way I never got sick of it. I felt like if I was banging my head against the wall, I'd come back to like, well, I care about making a difference. So if like I'm doing that, then like that's all the reward I really need. So I couldn't, you know, it'd been some time. I couldn't really figure out what it was that I wanted to do. And I was actually sitting in on this econ class uh, with my friends. Like I wasn't even taking the class, which is pretty funny. And I was just sitting there and I just kind of noticed um, post one of, uh, so my buddy's fraternity, um, they lost someone in their pledge class to suicide. And it kind of brought back all those familiar feelings for me, even though I wasn't very close with them. Um, and I kind of noticed the same phenomena happening where everyone, people who are best friends and family and people that don't know each other very well begin to hug one another when there's a loss. 
And I was just kind of like, why doesn't this happen all the time? Why does, you know, people change their actions when something dramatic happens? And so, you know, there's obviously a lot of reasons, reasons for that. And I think people start to lead with their hearts instead of their heads. And I just kind of figured out like, you know, all right, well, if I can encourage people to act this way all the time and be proactive to this, I mean, you never have to talk someone off the ledge if they never go looking for one. So I kind of just realized like, all right, so I, what I want to do now is encourage people to be proactive to this sort of thing. And, you know, I feel like society as a whole right now is kind of being reactive to it. Um, and so, yeah, I just basically was like, all right, right there, hug your friends. So that's where that was born. Um, and so hug your friends um, is the, I'd rather say community, but it's a company that we, you know, make stylish and comfortable apparel to encourage warmth and togetherness in society. Um, just kind of raising funds and awareness for mental health. Um, you know, we did hats in November um, and did a collaboration with the Movember Foundation through the IFC here at school. Um, we raised, you know, just under a thousand dollars, which was, you know, a really rewarding experience for me. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's really cool to see it making, you know, a difference, you know, in the way people act um, in my community. Absolutely. Well, hey, that's I mean, that's awesome. That's really cool. And to see, you know, you take the next step beyond, you know, the morning and the loss and the suffering that goes into that. It's awful. Um, it affects so many people in so many communities. And like you said, to be proactive instead of reactive, I think is so it, that's so cool. Um, and doing it in a way that's relatable. Right. And I think that's maybe some of the times what can be difficult about the subject. Not that I'm a subject matter expert, but you know, just being exposed to it, it's having these like monotonous or, um, you know, sort of overly formal trainings about this, that, and the above and how to respond to those things instead of just, you know, letting it really hit the heart where, you know, like you said, you got to lead from your heart and what you're doing stands for that. I think that's just so powerful. Obviously the message is being spread well and, um, congratulations on that. And, uh, I'm just rooting you on and making the, and hoping you make that difference because, uh, it's important. And, uh, what a better guy to do it than you, no better guy to do it than you. So, Hey, I appreciate that. But I mean, I would, I'm inclined to agree with you. I mean, you said, you know, I'm not an expert and who am I to say, and that's, that's totally how I feel, you know, just cause I've experienced loss. I mean, so many others have as well. I don't claim to be an expert on any of this, but you know, I just figured, I'm going to try to do something. And then that's when how your friends was born. But, uh, you know, who's to say that I know what I'm doing? Cause I really don't, but you know, <laughs> it's, Hey, Hey, well, I appreciate the humility. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Uh, again, just shows, it just shows your character though. I think that that's really what I want to draw to attention. It's like, you're doing something you're passionate about and for a good cause. That's, that's huge. At the end of the day, that's just what more can you ask for from anybody? So kudos to you. I know this has been making a lot of waves. Um, you're giving a TED talk on March 2nd. And does that have much to do with hug your friends and everything that you've been able to learn from this process? Is that related? Um, you know, everything's related in a way. Um, but it's definitely, uh, it's kind of the, my experience with mental health, you know, it's like a personal look into my life um, and my experience with it and like honored to be a part of it. Um, I kind of sent in my application right before 12 o'clock midnight. Um, I saw a post on their Instagram and it was, I knew that it was something I always wanted to do and I uh, got it in at 1159. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, talked to one of my friends who worked with TEDx um, in the past and he was like, I'm going to be honest, you applied for, I don't know how they, you know, separate it, but he said, you should reapply for the student version or the student competition. There's no way you get like admitted this way. Um, it's super competitive, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so I kind of had, you know, really low hopes for it. I was just like, okay, well then, you know, maybe next year or something else. And um, then I woke up the next morning to an email that said, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like taken back by the whole experience. And that's kind of been the key uh, 
you know, phenomena since being admitted was, you know, I've just been taken back by the whole experience. I mean, it's super immersive. Everyone is super cool over there. Um, and I mean, they set you up with like a speaker coach and everything, you know, the, to guide you through the process, which, you know, like it's been huge for me because it's a very overwhelming thing. Um, it's going to be at Mackey Auditorium, which is a big auditorium on campus, um, you know, in front of a few thousand people. And I personally have never done any public speaking. So that's obviously like a very daunting experience. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, Ted's got one rule and it's basically like you can't promote a brand um, or anything of that sort. Um, not that I was planning on promoting Hug Your Friends, but my speech is centered just in a way because um, it's about my experience and my battle with um, mental health, which is, you know, very daunting in itself because I'm about to open myself up and be transparent in front of like a room of, you know, people I've never met before in a way that I haven't really even opened up to my closest friends. But that's kind of the message is I want society as a whole to be okay with doing that. Um, and so I guess I got to take a dose of my own message, you know, my own medicine and do it myself. But uh, yeah, I'm super excited for it. Um, it kind of just talks about, you know, a moment where I was really lost and I just didn't really know what I was doing in my life and some different perspectives that had, you know, changed my reality into creating the person I am today. And uh, I hope that by sharing these that some, you know, someone in the crowd can identify with it and hopefully, you know, lead a better life because of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I, and I've heard about this preparation process. So many different sessions. You've got your mentor, you've got your script, but you can't use your script on stage, right? There's no notes allowed. No notes. It's one, is it one take? Is that the idea as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's live, live audience. I'm not uh, completely sure if they live stream it or not. I think they do. I do know they record it, but yeah, it's just one take. Um, it's eight to 14 minutes, I want to say. And then, yeah, I mean, unless you have like images or some bullet points on the board, that's like your only, your only notes. So. Wow. Uh, wow. 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 Well, what an awesome experience. I mean, golly, first time out there public speaking like that, that's got to be uh that's got to be exciting. I mean, you got to be excited for that. And like you said, dude, taking a dose of your own medicine, like that's, that's such a cool challenge to put yourself through as a person, right? Like, totally. I mean, that's, that's amazing. What are you most looking forward to out of it? Um, I'm looking forward to evolving as a human, you know, like you, you said, challenge yourself as a human. And I think that might be one of the messages that I'm trying to convey on March 2nd is just kind of like, you can create who you want to be. And that's what I kind of figured out. Um, and so, you know, the person I want to be has the confidence and the experience to do so and, you know, make a change on a big scale. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to be able to get up in front of a room and just kind of drop the veil and just tell them, you know, exactly how it is. So, you know, while it's scary and it's my first time and it's a big step in the right direction, it's definitely, like you said, I mean, it's just, it's a big moment. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just going to go up there and do my best. And either way, you know, I want to have a regret. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I'm thinking back right now, as you're saying that, like you said that you were competitive snowboarder. I don't know if you said professional or competitive or just competitive. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. Competitive. Yeah. Well, I mean, competing in different you know, events growing up, that's got to feel like a similar sort of competition in that sense of like, I'm going to give it all I got on this run, right? Like, yeah, totally. whatever I got, this is what I got. And, um, you know, it's going to turn out how it needs to turn out. And, you know, there's always there's always another speech to give. And there's always there's always a place to improve. Um, but I mean, just you coming from the heart, I think is going to be awesome. You're gonna you're gonna ace it. So um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to tune into that. Where can people tune into that? Uh, so yeah, if you go to their Instagram at TEDxCU, um, I'm sure there's going to be a link in there or at least some guiding information, but tickets are available right now. Um, if you're a student, uh, they're, they're free. So you just put in your uh, student email and then they're free. And then if not, uh, for everybody else, I think they're 20 bucks or something like that. But, nice. Uh, but yeah, nice. I, I'm glad you brought up the whole sport aspect because... 
you know, growing up doing sports, I think it has led me to have that perspective where it's like, you know, put it all on the line, go for it. You're only going to regret if you play it safe, you know, you just got to do it. And uh, I mean, I'm totally getting that butterfly feeling. I think the only difference is that I had some experience, some training going into those things, you know, and Mm -hmm. completely free ball on it, uh, you know, this time around. But luckily, you know, having, like I said, those, those mentors like Jeff and Michael, uh, you work with us, you has just been a complete game changer. I don't know if I'd be able to do without him. So it's nice to be able to lean on somebody. Absolutely. Well, shout out to Jeff and Michael. I'm sure that that's been, uh, that's been awesome having them by your side and making it happen over there for uh, all the preparation that goes into it. There's a lot of prep that goes into it. I don't think people really understand that. We touched on it a little bit, but I mean, it is, it's not just like, Hey, I put this speech together and I'm just going to go up. It's like, there's a lot of sessions. You meet with these people time and time again, how many months like of preparation is there in, in total? Um, I don't know the exact uh, amount, but I, I believe it's probably around four months. Um, you yeah. get accepted and then you get uh, matched up with your speaker coach. And then it just kind of like you assess from there how often you want to meet. Um, Jeff and I meet, I think, pretty frequently. We meet once a week um, usually, which is like seems to be the perfect amount um to get that guidance and then i can have you know throughout the week you know put that time in um but uh yeah i mean and then all of a sudden it's like the other day you know i still haven't even finished this thing and he's like all right you gotta have this thing done by you know next sunday and then we're gonna be doing this and whatever and revisions and i was just like oh my gosh we're six weeks out like it's gonna go by like a lot just so yeah but it's it's awesome you know Again, like it's definitely been a really cool experience and I'm super honored to be a part of it. But Absolutely, man. Well, hey, you deserve to be a part of it. I think anyone that's working towards something and putting themselves out there in any way, shape or form, you know, it all comes back, right? Like the universe loves to give back to the people that are putting themselves out there and that are trying new things and that are, you know, risking, you know, whatever it is, if you want to call it failure, I don't really believe in that word, but like, if you want to say like, you know, try new things and putting themselves in different opportunities, um, you know, it all comes back full circle. So uh, you deserve I to be totally up there. I'm, uh, I'm glad you said that. Like the whole, you don't really believe in failure. Like, okay, well, if you fail and you don't give up, then you're just growing. You're learning from that. And then you're going to be better the next time or whatever parallel, you know, happens just because of it. And I mean, like, absolutely. I think that paired with like surrounding yourself with good people, like I already mentioned, you know, Michael Burns and Jeff Donaldson um, with the TEDx stuff. I mean, uh, my business partner, Will Packard, I mean, there's been so many times where I've just like hit a wall and I didn't know what to do. And I'm just so glad like he's been a part of this and he, you know, cares about it just as much as I do, Um, you know, because without that and without those people and without, you know, understanding like failures are going to happen, but life really does have a weird way of preparing you for what you need to do and just understanding it's a lesson, you know, like it just changes everything. hundred percent, 100 percent. Well, I'm excited for it. Um, you know, you've been putting in the work, it's going to be awesome. And, uh, just sharing it. I mean, sharing about it. I just think who really gets to hear about somebody that's getting ready for their tech, you know, Ted talk. That's, that's sweet. I mean, I love that you get to share that on here. That That's I'm honored for that. I want to switch gears a little bit for us now and um, talk about some other things that you're doing. I mean, I don't know. It's been a roller coaster. Um, you know, we've Will and I, uh, who I mentioned uh, have worked with a bunch of tech startups um, and it's just kind of like you get reached out and just have an open mind, you fall into it. And we've kind of find ourselves now in a position where we've placed ourselves between students and tech startups um, and we kind of facilitate growth and uh, strategy for their marketing um, for them um, and uh, it's been a really cool experience um, our the first time i ever did it um, was with a company door list um, that started at u of a with two graduates um, and it was you know a cool experience um, it was basically an app with a QR code that refreshes every second. Um, that way, you know, wristbands at fraternities are kind of a big issue right now. They're just, they can be copied, printed, et cetera. And it's also just a pain to get them to your friends. 
Um, and you could just all, they did that all throughout an app. And um, yeah, I mean, it was a cool experience that Will and I kind of fell into. And uh, they had a university wide sales competition, um, which we were actually, you know, lucky enough to win, um, which is a really cool feeling. Um, but uh, yeah, from that, um, we also worked with um, Just College, which is you know, the largest travel agency for college students um, and worked directly with the CEO, Bo Thede. He's the, he's the man, a uh, mentor of mine as well. He went to Boulder um, a, you know, a while back and uh, he started Just College as an app to be a new Facebook because he realized all of the adults were starting to get onto Facebook. So he wanted to make a just college version. And, you know, obviously letting, having an open mind, it developed into a travel agency for college students and um, they do it better than, you know, anyone else. And it's really cool to watch his growth. And um, yeah, so we worked with him this year and um, developed like a growth strategy for him. And uh, we ended up breaking their record as well, um, which was a really cool feeling. Um, and then, yeah, now currently, um, I'm working with Will on another project for a tech startup called Utrend. Um, and it's, it's a really cool app. Um, the way I would describe it is if you've ever seen the movie Nerve, um, it, if you don't have, and you haven't, uh, maybe watch the trailer, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I really do believe in this app and I think it could be on, you know, every college kid's phone from New York to California, um, you know, if, if grown right. And we uh, executed a growth strategy for him here where we passed out a bunch of envelopes under the dorm room doors and it just said, pick me up. And then it was like a QR code and it was this riddle. And so we did it like two times. Um, and then eventually, you know, I mean, we got, I think it was like 70% of those 1500 envelopes onboarded on the app to like pre-order whatever, which is a crazy um, percentage for a marketing campaign. Usually if you get above five, um, but I can't take all the credit for that because that was Jawad's idea. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know where he came up with that, but it crushed. So um, just moving forward with that, you know, expanding the growth team, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a really cool experience and uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's just having the open mind to fall from one thing to another, you know, if you don't have any like moral ambiguity about the person who's doing it, if you believe in them and think they're a good person, then, you know, it's always a good time and it's really cool to work with people high in their field like that um, and just kind of, you will know, learn from them and have those little nuggets that they can you know hopefully drop for you even though you're you know just working for them in a way but uh absolutely well awesome 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 i'm sure that's just been uh you know as far as it goes with everything you're doing as well like helping you refine your strategies and your approaches with your projects so um what a, what a wonderful way to you know stay engaged outside the classroom i think that's awesome awesome a huge success too which is sweet yeah, it's been a really cool experience and huge for both Will and I, you know, with Hug Your Friends, just because like, we'll see them come to a problem or we'll see how they, you know, lead. And that's just been like really cool to be able to find those parallels and, you know, adapt them as well. Um, and also knowing like that experience of just working for somebody else and seeing how, you know, like if we, as we bring on more people on our team, like how people deserve to be treated, I mean... Bo, Bo has this ideology and it's, he basically says good business is good relationships. And I've seen it firsthand, like he takes care of us so well and it really does work out in the best way possible because as you do that, you want to work harder. You want to do better for him. You want to sell more, you want to, you know, it's just like having been shown that, um, you know, has been an eye opening experience for me. How do you how do you have the organization to keep all these things together? Because I think that can be overwhelming for a lot of people to think that, hey, that's a lot of projects. How would he even do that? Well, you're doing it. So give us the secret sauce. What's been working for you? What do you 
what have you been digging into and how have you been uh, organizing yourself? I'm still figuring it out. I get overwhelmed all the time. Um, and I think that's kind of a part of the growing process. Um, I've found some things that have worked out for me just to manage stress and whatnot. But I think realistically, just like not delaying things and getting them on the calendar um, is huge because then they're not hanging over your head anymore and you know how they're going to play out. Um, and that was a big weakness of mine. And it still is. Um, is just kind of making it and keeping a tight calendar, just like having it all planned out, um, you know, as much as you need, just so that you can see visually how it's all going to play out and how it's all going to work. Um, otherwise, you know, if you just have these things hanging around, like you're either going to forget things or you're going to pushing them back or, you know, you're just not going to be as efficient with your time. Um, and I think that, you know, is like a huge asset just to be able to kind of just check things off a list. Um, it's also like super rewarding, but yeah, I mean, as far as the stress goes, I mean, it, you know, it's, it just kind of comes with it. And I think you got to embrace it. I mean, the other day, like I was literally breaking out in hives just cause like I was just so overwhelmed. Um, and I'm not even, you know, afraid to share that it happens, but, um, you know, you just kind of take time when you need and, uh, lean on the people you trust and, uh, things, you know, they, they work out, but, uh, it kind of goes back to what you say, you know, like do your best and then, you know, the world's going to recognize that. And it kind of comes back tenfold in ways that you couldn't imagine, but just keep moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I love that advice. Um, you know, it's just a hard headed mentality at the end of the day, you know, it's just, it's, it's there's no secret recipe, right? There's no secret sauce that's going to like, you know, unlock it all to everybody. It's just, you got to keep going. You just got to put your head down and you got to just keep on figuring out how you can improve and how you can keep giving back, how you can keep putting yourself out there. So I love that. That's such real advice you're giving. So I just, I just want to say that's sweet. Um, as far as it goes with the movie, I'm curious about the movie. Have you written a movie before? What prompted you to start writing the movie? Um, if you could share even what it's roughly about, uh, that would be pretty neat as well. But I think that's a really just a unique thing. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a funny experience. Uh, I mean, we're only like three weeks into it. Um, so nothing crazy to report there, but it's a cool experience. And um, I'm hyped to, you know, really get into it. But um, yeah, really just started uh, in uh, July. I was with one of my cousins and we were just kind of talking. And I, uh, I mentioned to him, the idea of the movie, I was just like, wouldn't it be funny if somebody, you know, wrote all this out and did this and filmed that? Like, I know we'd, we'd die laughing watching it. And uh, he was just like, yeah, like, why don't they do that? Blah, blah, blah. And then I kind of listed off a few examples. I was like, like, we watched this and we watched this growing up. And then here, like, you know, I just feel like there isn't a super modern version of that, and especially with like people's attention spans today. You know, I think this could be big. And he was just like agreeing with me. Um and then literally a few weeks ago, uh, he just like calls me out of the blue and he's like, Hey, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a senior this year and I'm just kind of looking for a productive way to fill some of my time. Um, you want to make this thing happen? Do you want to do this movie? And I was just like, I completely forgot what you were talking about. He like re, you know, pitched the idea and I was just like, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, I got some time on, on Sundays if you want to just, you know, get on a call and start writing things out and. So then that's just kind of the stage we're at, what have we been, we've been doing. And it's just like, you know, a lot of laughter and, uh, you know, stuff of that regard. But yeah, I mean, the goal would be to write it all out and then bring it to somebody um, who we think can make it come to life. And yeah, it would just be, it's just like a really cool process, something I've never done. Um, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. That's awesome. That's super cool. That's super cool. Some of the best things come out of those passion projects too. Like, you know, that you wouldn't expect either. And uh, I mean, as far as it goes, just jumping into something before you're ready, I, you always hear that advice, right? Like there's no perfect time to be ready or prepared. Like for you and your cousin just to tackle that and say, hey, let's actually just start doing it, right? I'm sure there's a lot of learning that goes into it as well. Like, hey, what do we actually need to do to get this thing to, you know, a proper script and, uh, and get it to somebody great to see. Um, and it's contagious. I think that's the biggest thing is people that do things. It's contagious. Um, it's just kind of one of those things I've learned through doing all these is that you just cross the bridge when you come to it. And um, as long as you can figure out the problem, you can probably figure out a solution. And it's, you know, it's a front process as long as you keep in mind that, 
um, enjoying the little moments and like enjoying the process itself. Like my, you know, Will Packard, uh, who I mentioned and I were in here boxing up, you know, hats for like three hours. And obviously like I was writing, you know, handwritten thank you notes and whatnot to everybody. And it was, you know, a tedious process, but we would just look at each other and smile and laugh because, you know, like that's a core memory. Like if Hug Your Friends works out or if it does, and I'll remember sitting here boxing up those hats and just like enjoying those moments and kind of excluding everything that's going on. Um, you know, like shipping hats to just like, for whatever reason is just like super expensive. Well, now we haven't figured that out, but just forgetting all that and just being like in the moment, if you can do that and then understand that like, all right, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. That's like, I think I feel is the best way to approach doing any of these things. And that's like the same mindset I took into going into that movie is like, I know nothing about it, but let's give it a shot. Why not? You know, and it's been yeah. a fun time doing that. So 100% dude, 100%. Well, I love that perspective. Uh, I love that perspective. As far as it goes, kind of leading into, you know, you being a sophomore, you got two more years of college after this. What do you, what's your ideal situation when you graduate? Um, that's a tough question. You know, I, I think I sometimes another one of my faults is I get uh, tunnel vision. So I kind of only really know what's going to go on until March or like late March. But uh, I guess, you know, mainly the goal would be to graduate with something sustainable because ultimately I want to own and run my own businesses. And, you know, I look up to a lot of people. Um one could be Dana White, you know, I think that guy runs multiple businesses a lot that people don't know about even. And I think they're all synergists in a way and they all kind of help the other. But mainly it's the community he brings together. He brings people together from all different walks of life. Like if you look around the ring at UFC, it's, you know, everyone from every different corner. And I think it's so cool that they all come and like just come together around the, you know, Dana and the UFC and like those experiences and memories that he creates for people. So if I could one day, you know, find myself in a position like that, that would be awesome. But as far as graduating, I mean, just hopefully enough money to keep, you know, taking on fun ideas and seeing where they take me. But, you know, um, yeah, life's, life's pretty cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. I love that. Well, hey, it's been awesome hearing about your happenings, what you've been up to, what you've learned, what where you hope to go. Um, we're going to close it out here and uh, hit it with a couple of rapid fire questions. So whatever comes to your mind, just first question, go ahead and shoot. But uh, first question for you is, what would you say the most stressful part about being a student is day in and day out? Uh, yeah, just back to you, the whole calendar thing. Um I'd miss certain assignments or I'd do them like at the very last hour just because I would get, you know, so involved in the project I was doing or trying to overcome this problem with whatever, you know, business venture we're working on. And while I enjoyed doing the business stuff more, I would take away from, I mean, I'm, I'm a college student that needs to come first. So finding that balance has really been probably the most difficult part and it's something I'm still working on. But um, yeah, just keeping that tight schedule so that you have everything in front of you so nothing slips through the cracks is is major. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next question is, uh, what would you say the most meaningful way for students to help each other is? Um, just kind of ask each other questions, you know, not like, and I know that's pretty broad, but I think like people often, you know, like in college, you have a lot of surface level interactions and if you can somehow add another layer of meaning, you know, to it, it, it can be, you know, make a huge difference. I mean, like I was having that conversation with my cousin that we described and that could have just been like house school, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But we were talking about something completely hypothetical and look where it turned out. Just, you know, letting conversation take you, you know, wherever it's going and not just like overthinking things, you know, I think having that relationship with your friends I mean, one of my favorite things in life is meaningful conversation. And so if you can have that, then you're on the right track for sure. I love that. Great advice. Great advice. Great advice. Next question. What, what do you suggest to any student that's looking to study at CU? 
Um, honestly, I'd suggest that's kind of tough. Um, I, I don't think I'm really qualified to be giving any advice as far as school goes. Um, so probably just do the opposite of what I'm doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think like, make sure you have a manageable schedule, um, and that it works for you. You know, some people like to have classes, you know, uh, Monday through Thursday so that they have Fridays off or whatever, or like, if you're like me, I have Tuesdays and Thursdays off so that I can put, you know, whatever I'm working on outside of school in those days. So that way I can kind of separate the two. But yeah, I mean, just kind of understanding that make college work for you. Um, and then, you know, uh, you learn a lot about yourself in the process. Next question is, what's your biggest hope to accomplish during your time on Earth? Wow. Um I mean, like I said, uh, I mentioned briefly, I mean, I just want to bring people together. Um, if I could do that on a big scale, um, you know, that would, that would make my life complete, but you know, even on a small scale as well, then, you know, it didn't all happen for nothing. Um, and I'd have that little piece of, you know, meeting to take away. So yeah, just bringing people together, creating some positive, you know, moments and memories that would, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Well, Chris McGee, you got to meet him here first. Um, and you're going to meet him on a bigger stage here shortly. Chris, it's been awesome having you on my friend. Hey, it's um, been an awesome experience. Can... It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Where can people keep up with you and uh, keep keep up with what you're doing? Yeah, you can follow us uh, on Instagram at hug your friends with a Z. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, uh, probably the best way is to do it by DM. But we also don't get a lot of emails either. So if you want to email us, that's hug your friends with a Z at gmail.com. If you want to see the TED stuff, um, uh, follow TEDxCU. Um, as far as the you know apps and startups I talked about, if you're interested in those, uh, you can follow Doorlist on Instagram at Doorlist. Uh, you, for you trend, it's best because uh, it hasn't come out yet. Um, as of the time of this recording, um, you might be able to look up on the Apple store, uh, u.trend in all caps. But uh, the website is up right now at u.trend or utrend.app. Um, and then Just College, you can find pretty much anywhere. Just look up Just College um, on Instagram or you know, the internet or whatever, and it'll pop up. But uh, yeah, that's where to find everything that we talked about. Awesome. Well, go get after it, guys. Uh, Chris, again, it's been awesome having you on, my friend, and uh, looking forward to all that you are yet to do and uh, all that's ahead of you. So cheers. Yeah.